All right. Um, konnichiwa, Vimconf. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me. This is my first time in Japan as well, and it's been just over 24 hours, and I'm already in love with Tokyo, uh, mostly because of the people, how kind they have been. Um, what I'll be talking about is building NeoVim plugins. Uh, a lot of it is transferable to whatever editor you use. So if you use Vim, if you use VS Code, even if you use Emacs, a lot of these things will be transferable. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm Abhishek. I go by 2K Abhishek on the internet. You can find my GitHub, X, all of those handles. Um, I currently work as a tech lead at Incubite. We are a services-based company based out of India. Um, and a lot of the work that I get to do uh, in NeoVim is because of them. Uh, I'm from a small town in eastern India known as Ramparat. Um, I have essentially worked remotely my entire career, which is about four years now. Um, and I think almost like everyone here, I'm a big fan of FOSS and the terminal. So um, my Vim, NeoVim journey, this is how it's been. I started out with Vim in college uh, around 2018. I used just Vim for almost three years. And then I discovered NeoVim when I did my first Lua rewrite uh, of my configs. Earlier, it was just a single VimRC file. Uh, and now it's a bit more structured according to my opinions and then uh, then I've continued with NeoVim. Um, so here's a couple of plugins I've built. And if you see the names and what they do, none of it is like groundbreaking or solving the most important problems. These are just problems that I wanted to solve, problems that I faced. And luckily, some other people were also facing those problems. So some of these are somewhat popular on GitHub. Um, a lot of these plugins actually build on top of what already exists. So some of them have telescope integrations, which gives me nice fuzzy finding. A lot of them uh, use plenary. Uh, a lot of them use some other plugins that uh, I myself wrote, and they provide some utils. Um, and funnily enough, Exorcism and Vim, which, the, which is the last plugin that you see, it was created while I was waiting at the airport during a layover, it just lets you browse exorcism from NeoVim and solve the exercises quickly. So uh, why would you want to consider plugin development? I think a lot of the people we have here have already tried and have already published a bunch of plugins. But this is to convince people who haven't tried it yet. Uh, so the biggest takeaway for you would be the fun aspect of it, you'll, you'll get to learn more about the Vim or NeoVim ecosystem, and you'll also get to learn about the different APIs it provides. Uh, it, it will definitely help you boost your own productivity. So you'll get to, uh, while you're building those plugins, the main problem that you'll be solving is what really interrupts you. What interrupts your flow state while coding? What interrupts, like let's say, a particular workflow that you have? So those things you can uh, solve using plugins. You can make your own tools. And although it's uh, not always recommended to build your own tools, but sometimes you just have to, and it's fun. Uh, you can enhance integrations. So there's lots of tools out there that we use as developers, from linters to like code completion to syntax highlighting, Git, Docker, a bunch of other tools. So and NeoVim, it's still new. Uh, and even Vim, it still lacks plugins for certain tools. So if you are using them, you might as well go out and build uh, integrations that enhance the interactivity between them. And then finally, uh, you can empower the community. As I mentioned earlier in the previous slide, none of those plugins were groundbreaking, but they did help solve problems. And they did help someone in the community to maybe improve their workflow just a little bit. So um, what do you need to start plugin development? You just need NeoVim and an idea. right? You don't need anything else. Uh, you need a little bit of knowledge of Lua, 
which you can get within NeoVim. If you just go to H Lua guide, it will point you to some other docs as well. And you can basically grab all the info you need, all of the useful APIs that you need from there. Uh, and if you need more, you can always search the help docs. Uh, one thing I'd recommend, uh, the plugin manager lazy.nvim. It provides a very nice local development workflow where you can uh, specify a DIR uh, attribute on your plugin spec, which will let you pick any plugin in your local directory, and it will just load it to lazy and your new Vim workflow like it was loaded from outside repository. Um, and then something that I'll talk about a little bit later is a ready to use plugin template. There's a lot of them out there. I'll talk about one of them and it just helps you get started quickly. So right now, if you could take just a moment to think about a plugin that you'd like to build and just keep that in the background, run it as a background job on your brain and maybe towards the end, you'll get some ideas. All right. So. Initially, when I started out with plugin development, these were essentially the things that I wanted to do. Uh, very simple things, like creating a command that executed, let's say, a series of steps, or that executed an external program, and did something with my code, or did something with my development environment. Or creating some key maps for existing commands. So some anything that you think is useful, right? Maybe something that lets you quickly switch between buffers, that lets you quickly switch between quick fix, lock list, all of those things. Um, and then, of course, being able to uh, support for user configuration, no matter what plugin and for what tool you build, I would highly recommend that you always respect the user's configur uh, configurability option. Um, and as TJ mentioned earlier, the PD, the personalized development environment, that is something that really resonated with me. So this is something that I close, hold very close to me. So now I'm going to just quickly flip over some Lua snippets, which will show you how each of these things are done. And all of these snippets are taken from octohub.nvim, a recent plugin I had published that lets you browse and quickly switch between all of your GitHub repos or basically pass in a GitHub username, and it will show all of the public repos of that person, and you can easily interact with those. So this is how you add commands. Uh, the most important thing here is the nvim create user command. And if you see, all it needs is a string, what you're trying to call the plugin, what are the arguments it will take, and the function itself. So the content in between is a bit interesting. Uh, this is my solution for how I pass in parameters to a Lua function. There's, of course, better ways out there, but this is just something that um, I thought was handy, and I kind of reused this in some other plugins. And I'll show you how this looks in action in the next slide. Um, and yeah, another cool thing to, uh, another important thing to notice would be the enargs attribute. So at the end of the function, if you see, it takes in another Lua table, which can take in options. Um, and you can specify the number of arguments you want this command to process. So this is adding key maps. Uh, and before I get into how you add key maps, uh, to what I was referring to earlier, how I pass in arguments. If you see, octorepos is the main command, but then I pass in uh, how I want to uh, sort the repos or which kind of repos I want to look at. So those things I'm using the arg passing logic from the previous slide. Um, okay, so how you create a command, right? Uh, it's, it's a bit verbose uh, and necessarily so, but alw I always like to create this little utility function called add key map. And all it does is takes in three arguments, the actual keys, the command that needs to run, and a description. Um, I'd always recommend whenever you're setting up a key map, please add descriptions. Uh, it will automatically help any kind of uh, keyboard-related plugin or keybinding-related plugin to easily show the users that, hey, this plugin provides these commands. So like, which key can automatically pick this up? 
Um, and yeah, and then I use a config option. So like, if the user wants to set their own configs, uh, their own key bindings, they can disable the config dot uh, add default key bindings. Uh, and if they want to use the default key bindings, they can go ahead and do it. Okay, configurations. This is something that is going to be fairly standard no matter what Lua plugin you try to build. You can have a, a similar, I think, Vim version as well with Vim script. You can develop your own. But what it essentially does, it, it defines a default config. Uh, if a user does not provide a config or if a, if a user has not provided some attributes of the config, the default one will be picked up. Otherwise, if you see the setup function, it just uh, overrides the table. It calls table deep extend, and it overrides the existing default table with the options that were passed in by the user using, let's say, the config attribute in lazy or the opts attribute that lazy provides. All right, uh, so a plugin structure. This is uh, my opinionated structure, right? This, again, lots of them out there. You can build your own, but this is something uh, called template.nvim, something I use to create new plugins. Just saves me a little bit of time uh, when I'm just starting. And I'll, I'll quickly give you a walkthrough of all of uh, these files and the most important ones that you must include. Um, so we'll start with the Lua folder. So this is where your, uh, all of your source code, the main logic of your code will live. I'll recommend that you have a root file, uh, which is the same, which should be the same as the name of your plugin. So in this case, template. Uh, and then you have like a module folder or a folder with the same name where you uh, present all your modules. So in my case right now, I have the template Lua file and then I have a module for the commands that this plugin sets up a config module for the default config, overriding the config, all of those things. And then, uh, and then you can just structure how you want it, right? You can, if let's say if it's super complicated, if there's lots of uh, modules necessary, you can go even deeper in nesting. But like, let's say if it's something lightweight, you could just have like a main.lua that holds all of your business logic for uh, your plugin. Then the next important part would be the specs, which is under the test directory. Uh, I prefer using Busted. Uh, it's a Lua testing library. Uh, you can just uh, init it. And then for each of the modules, you can have a module underscore spec or whatever format you want to use. Um, then another important thing, uh, and this is to save you time uh, in maintenance, is the GitHub workflows. So I maintain two. Uh, one is for CI, which controls linting and testing. Uh, it will automatically run your uh, lints. If anything is broken, it will shout at you uh, in GitHub Actions, and it also has tests. So it will run all of your uh, tests present in the test directory. And then uh, something that I really like is the docs one. So what it does is it will just pick up your readme.md, whatever you add, uh, whatever instructions you add in your readme.md, and it will create uh, the template.txt file, if you see under the doc folder. So that means that you do not need to maintain two different files where you are providing instructions. Uh, you can just maintain a nice readme.md, and you'll get the vim doc uh, help file generated automatically. Um, and then there are some supporting files. Uh, the make file for running commands, whatever you want to use. You can use anything here. You can use just, you can use some other tool, um, and then uh, if you want to use Ty Lua, Selen, something like that, you can mention those here as well. Uh, again, this is uh, my structure that I've been, I've recently developed, and I'm pretty much uh, using it now uh, for all plugins, but this is very easy to modify and create your own version of it. So uh, what are the advanced things that you can do with plugins? Uh, First of all, asynchronous APIs. Although it may sound complicated, it's, it's very simple with vim.schedule or with something like plenary. It's literally just a single command, and you can do async tasks within that. But if you are getting into callbacks, multiple callbacks, you may want to pace yourself and think about your code structure. 
Uh, and I'd always recommend whenever you're building something blocking, use async. Uh, then integration with external tools. So there's already a lot of uh, integrations out there, but if you are working with a CLI tool or if you're working with a web API, they of course support curl, so you can integrate uh, NeoVim with those tools. And in fact, I think the most two recent plugins, OctoHub and Exorcism, both of them are integrations. One is with the GitHub CLI, and the other is with uh, Exorcism CLI. And if you want to build anything GitHub related, I think GitHub CLI has an API option, which is super handy. So if you want to try something like that out, uh, I'd highly recommend it. Um, another thing you can do is build like really intricate UIs, uh, which is a bit complicated, but then there's plugins out there which I'll talk about in a bit that you can do it with. And then using tree sitter and LSP. So this is, LSP is something that I'm still trying to learn more about. Uh, I have some private repos where I'm trying to play around with it and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll try and build something soon. Uh, but LSP and tree sitter as a combination can literally help you do anything in your code buffer. Uh, so if you want to explore that, that's also an option. And then this is not all. It's, it's just bounded by your imagination, whatever you want to build. You can literally build that with uh, Lua and NeoVim or whatever language, whatever editor you want. Uh, some useful plugins, again, plenary, uh, lots of useful things from related to paths, related to async APIs. Uh, I use it almost always, and I created a wrapper out of it called utils, uh, which just simplifies some of the functions even further, some of the most used things I have. Then anyway, uh, this will let you build very nice UIs within uh, NeoVim. So if you want to build like floating windows, if you want to build uh, things like the DAP UI, if you have seen the debugger UI, it's really uh, intuitive, and it, it uh, almost doesn't feel like a UI application. So you can build things like those with NUI. Lazy Dev is from Fulky. Uh, he makes really great plugins, and this is something that will uh, help you out while you are working on plugins. So if you need completions around Lua, you can get those with this. Um, and then NVM Lua Pad, it's like a quick scratch pad. So if you want like a REPL-based environment, to test out your plugins, test out your code, you can try out LuaPad. Okay, uh, some quick tips. Uh, always treat yourself as user zero. This not only helps with knowing the problem really well, but it helps make it more fun, because you will never run out of motivation when you are solving problems for yourself. Uh, it's not necessary to go out there and solve the biggest problems. Uh, first of all, try and solve something that you yourself are facing and maybe five other people will join you in the journey. Uh, then respect user configuration. Again, respect the personal development environment of the user. Mind the performance. Do not do blocking operations. Avoid them as much as you can. Document everything. Uh, I, I can't stress this enough. Document every command, every config, every key binding, every little behavior that you think is weird within your uh, NeoVim uh, readme, right, within your plugin readme, it really helps users get started. Um, automated testing, something that we can always improve, right, we can always write better tests, but make sure that the most critical behavior of your code is well tested. Uh, and then uh, share and care, share your plugin, publish it on GitHub, publish it on awesome NeoVim, and then work with the community to build out new features. And then, as I mentioned earlier, most importantly, have fun. You do not want this to be boring. It's your day job can already do that for you. So make sure that this part is fun. All right, uh, that was all. Uh, I just wanted people to be a bit more motivated and at least try building out some plugins. Uh, you can find me on 2 Shake at Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever you want to talk to me. And if you need any help, if you uh, want to contribute to any of the plugins that I have, I'm more than welcome to make changes, work with you, do code reviews and stuff. Um, and yeah, that was all. Thank you. <laughs>